So today we continue our discussion of scale. Uh, first we will discuss uh, the actual algorithm for doing the subset construction. Then we'll talk about some implementation uh, issues about you know, scanning, how to actually implement the scan. Uh, so last time we presented the subset construction through examples. So we gave a couple of examples. And the idea of the subset construction, the more efficient version of it, the more efficient version that does not uh, you know, look at all states, it only considers the states that are reachable. So that practical, the more efficient version, it first uh, you know, starts with a certain start state. So let's write the code here. So uh, starting with the D0, that is the start state for uh, the start DFA state. And how does this relate to the start state in the NFA? We are referring to DFA states as Ds and NFA states as Ns. So how does the D0 relate to the N0 and the NFA? Uh, initial state. So is it equal to it? <laughs> yeah, it's the epsilon closure. So you want to look at the epsilon closure of the, this N0. So if N0 has transitions to N1 and N2, and maybe here N3, then the epsilon closure is going to be N0, N1, N2, N3. So in this algorithm, D0 is going to be the epsilon closure of N0, where N0 is the start state of the given NFA. Okay. Then the idea of the algorithm is to start with that state, then this is the first state that we discover. This is the seed. And we look at the transitions of that state. When we look at the transitions of that state, we discover new states. And then for every new state that we discover, we look at the transitions of those states, and those will lead to discovering other states, and so on. Right. And when do we stop? Yeah. Discovered. No, uh, when we are no longer discovering new states. Exactly. So that's why you know, this is a fixed point computation algorithm. So this kind of algorithm is called the fixed point uh, computation. Because we stop when the state does not change. The state of the algorithm. We are not making any progress and we are not discovering any new states. So now, in order for this algorithm to work, we have to track. Uh, we have to have two lists. We have to have the full list, which is, uh, you know, complete list of discovered uh, DFA states. And we have the work list. What do you think the work list would be? Why do we need a work list and a full list? So we keep discovering states. Yes? Uh, the work list will be states that are reachable, like the situation where we had that one state that only went out but not went in. Well, all states are reachable. So we will only, the algorithm will only see reachable states. Unreachable states will not be seen at all. Oh, it needs a spot to accumulate states on the list before it adds it to the full list or checks it against the full list. Okay. So we have the full list in which we accumulate all the states, but at any given point in time, you know, we will have some lists that have been discovered but have not been examined yet, have not been processed. In, in other words, we haven't looked at their transitions, the transitions out of these states. So the work list is list of DFA states that we are still working on that have been discovered but have not been processed. 
been processed yet. So in this case, in fact, when we discover this state, we will add it to both. Add D0 to full list and work list. Then this algorithm will be uh, taking one state from the work list, one state at a time, and looking at the transitions of that. So there will be a while loop while work list is not empty. We will get a state, let's call it uh, D. D equals work list dot extract first. So get the first state from the work list. Okay. And now we would like to process this. So to process this D, we will look at its transitions. And in order to look at its transitions, we would have to go through all possible what? Symbols. Symbols, exactly. So for every <coughs> symbol C in the alphabet, we, la we look at, we compute T that is equal to delta of Delta is the transition function. So we're, we're looking for delta of what and what? D and C. So delta, the transition function of a finite automaton takes a state <coughs> and a symbol. So delta of D and C. But in fact, in this algorithm, we don't just look at the delta. We look at the epsilon closure of that delta. We always look at the epsilon closure. So in fact, oh, this is not going to fit. So I'm going to epsilon closure of delta of D and C. Then what should we do with this T? This is the transition. So we will just put that in a table. We're trying to construct a DFA. And the, a DFA can be represented by a two-dimensional table. You know, remember, a DFA is just a bunch of states, S0, or let's call them Ds. D0, D1, D2. And here we have the symbols of the alphabet. So these symbols are A, B, C, and 1, 2, all the symbols of the alphabet. In a programming language, our symbols are going to be uh, you know, letters, numbers, and all the different uh, operators and characters that are acceptable. Okay. So now we are. This is our t, a two-dimensional table. So in this t, we say that t of d and c equals t. So we are building the DFA by building uh, these transitions. Then what should we do? So we have discovered. We have processed this state. And then we found the transitions. And then what should we do? See if it's uh, duplicated. Okay, okay, great. Yes. So that's a good point. So we have to check if T is new or uh, has been seen before, right? If T is new, then what should we do with it? Add it to the work list. Add it to both lists. Because if it's new, then it will be added to the full list, and it will be added to the work list, because we have to process it next, right? 
if T is a state that has been seen, <coughs> we don't do anything. We have already processed it. <coughs> okay? So in this case, if T is new, if T uh, does not belong to, or let's write it in words, is not in full list, not a new state, oh, no, if it's not in the full list, then it's a new state, then we add T to full list and work list. Okay, so whenever we discover a state, we put it on that uh, list uh, of full states and we put it on the list of states that have not been processed yet. So on the work list, you know, the work list is getting smaller because whenever we process a state, we extract it, we take it out of the work list. So the work list, uh, in fact, you know, can, go, can get smaller or bigger because we add to it and we take from it. Uh, in, the, in this case, yeah, so for, for example, in, in one iteration of this loop, you know, we can take one state out of the work list <coughs> But here, in this for loop, we may add multiple states. So at the end of this iteration, the work list may become bigger. But at, at some point, we will stop discovering new states, and then the work list will become empty, right? Eventually, the work list will become empty. And when the work list becomes empty, we stop. So this is the subset construction in, in algorithmic form. Now, in, in, in this course, you know, unlike the theory of computation course, it's a good idea to you know, think of these, uh, all of these uh, concepts and terms, uh, think of them as actual you know, algorithms that will get uh, implemented using some programming language. So this will eventually become code, because here we are building a compiler. We're not just you know, understanding concepts. Okay, so <clears throat> now what's the what's the asymptotic complexity of this algorithm? Assuming that the NFA has n states. NFA has n states. I guess worst case it could go to n squared. And squared. You do the n. Any other answer? N times s, where n s is the symbol count. That's it. So why is it n times s? What's what's the worst case? What's the worst case scenario? If we have n NFA states. Yes. Is it the for loop for every state you have n? You have to search every other state n. In the for loop. We have to search every other state? Right, for at, at each state that you're... No, what you are saying is that for every... Uh, for every symbol, oh, symbol, for every symbol, we'll have to go through the symbols, and for every symbol we may discover a new state, right? For every symbol, we will look at the transitions and we can potentially discover a new state, right? But okay, let's make it specific. How many times will this loop be executed? The while loop, in the worst case? For versus um, only like two to the n. Yeah, in the worst case <coughs> is, worst case is two power n, or n, where n is the number of states in the NFA. And in fact, when, you know, when we are analyzing the algorithm and we discover that you know, the, the main loop is exponential, can get executed an exponential number of times, we don't look at, uh, at what's inside because it's already exponential and it's already 
uh, in, in theory, it's already too slow. So in fact, in this case, it's more than two power n, but two power n itself is enough to make it a worst case exponential algorithm. Okay. And, you know, exponential is extremely slow. So if you have, you know, two power 100, if you do the math for two power 100, that will you know, correspond to millions and millions of billions of years, in fact, on, on a, uh, in a typical computer. If you do the math for two power 100, that's gonna be, you know, a ridiculous number of years. So now the question is, uh, why is this? This is uh, done in practice and it works fine. So why does this work fine? Because they probably eliminate duplicate states out of the work list. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it, 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 yeah, it processes a state once, but as we have seen in the example last time, the, the worst case scenario is very unlikely. You know, in, in the example that we saw last time, the worst case was how many states for the last example we did last time. 1024. 1024. And we actually discovered actual was how many states? I think it was four or five. Five. Five, five states. So we discovered <coughs> five out of 1024. So in practice, you will only discover a small subset of the set of possible states. You know, remember last time we did not draw a thousand states on the board. We only drew a few states. Okay, because this is one algorithm where the worst case is very unlikely in fact. But even, you know, even if this is slow, remember that this is not going to be done at compile time. So this is something that will be done when we are building the compiler. So it's important to, when we are <coughs> studying compiler construction, it's important to know the, you know, the things that are done when we are building the compiler and the things that are done when we are actually using the compiler to compile an application. So we have building the compiler, and compile the application, And last thing is run the application. So if, if we're talking about a popular you know, application like uh, Google search engine or Microsoft Word or whatever, then this application is run you know, by billions of people many, many times a day, right? While the compilation it gets compiled by the, the software uh, company that makes that application. But building the compiler itself is done even less frequently. You know, you build the compiler. Who builds the compiler? Who build the, the company that makes the compiler. So if you are using you know, Visual C++, it's Microsoft. Only Microsoft builds that compiler. It's not even when you know, the application programmers use the Visual C++ uh, compiler to, to build their applications. So the point is that this is something that is not done very frequently, you know, building a compiler, whether it's a, uh, you know, an open source or a closed source compiler, building a compiler is not something that happens frequently. And, uh, you know, this algorithm is done when we are building the compiler, not when we are compiling an application. 